Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contributions on this channel. Please kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed and also click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. In this channel, I bring information to your doorstep. I bring news from all channels, from every angle. Things that have to do about the world, things that have to do about Africa, more especially Nigeria. I bring it to your doorstep. Some informations that you ignore, some information that you cannot be able to come across. I look for them, I bring it to your doorstep for you to see. Every video you see on this channel is for educational purpose, to keep you up and get you aware of what is happening in the contraption called Nigeria, more especially. I bring the information to your doorstep. They are not lies. Most of the videos you're going to watch here are videos that are coming from the conventional media. And some of us sometimes are lazy to get into it. Some of us are, sometimes are too busy to be able to lay our hand on this. That is why I bring the videos to your doorstep. Watch from beginning to the end. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes so that you can be educated and know what is going on. Let us watch together. At the end, you can go to the comment section and put down your comment. Give your opinion. Say it the way you feel it. Nobody's going to come against you. It's a free world, and this is the social media where people say it and set the record straight exactly the way it is without being controlled. Do that on the comment section. Let us watch the video together as it comes. Thank you. I don't know why I say we have never been anybody to be the chairman. Excellency, 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 Excellency. But you are here on a very serious note. And I'm very happy this meeting was summoned. And you are 10 in this great number. I didn't know it was going to be a slide. I thought it was like the meeting we were having before. Because I come with a lot of passion. You see, talking about Obi, talking about this incident, where is all right with all of you? You can't share the passion of Clark and myself. Because many of you don't know what was before independence and before the coup of 1966. Many of you grew up after the military coup of 1966 when they turned Nigeria upside down. When we are having all the problems we have set to before independence to live in peace together if we really want to Nigeria sincerely. With all the problems we have, the question of revenue allocation, the question of state police, is because we said all that before the music came. All that is issue. What is your duty now? I listen to all you have said, and as uh, Senator Arakele said, the battle is on. I don't like all the come and do all these nice speeches. You are in a war. And our opponents are not sleeping at all. They have underrated us when we begin. They are now seeing how we this we go and they are devising all sorts of machinations. I would like to have a meeting with at least two delegates from each place. Because what I want to say now is this crowd is too much for me. It's, we have a plan for action now. And the deputy leader of Fizzy the, the ladies folk there. Don't take it lightly. This is where I stand. It's not a question. You are fighting for your freedom. It's not an ordinary by election you're having. The minority Northerners who are holding on this president, they don't want to leave office. Don't they, they don't 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 play with your freedom. Don't be deceived. You are not doing an election. You are fighting a war to get out of slavery, out of bondage. All this cultural revelation they are judging for you just is a, a camouflage. Many of us are living in denial. Even among the Igbos, they are fighting shy of saying this is our turn. Because they say it's an evil affair. 
But the citizens now say they are different affair. When the Igbo say they want to go, you are teaching them. You say they can't go, go to war. And the very reason why they feel they are being cheated, you are doing it openly. I don't you see. If many of you think of the battle in a, in a philosophical and ideological principle, it is not a question of justice and election. Obi phenomenon is not uh, labor, it's not Obi. And as I often said, I'm seeing repeating. Those of us who are voting for Labour under Obi leadership, Labour Party now is like Nadeko. Mm. All those who are there, I am not Labour. You know my background. But Obi is giving the, 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 the crusade to get the world from the bondage of serious oppressors who are blind oppressors. Don't, don't make a mistake about it. They don't want to go. They don't want to live there. I'm saying it openly. And as that lady said, take it from me. A fellow Yoruba man was speaking to me like yesterday at the place. I went to visit somebody, probably Yoruba man. And then I was asking Baba, I will say, ah, you don't know Baba, I won't be here. And I said, you, what are you? So you are not to be, I said, you are gone. Ah, only Baba, obey your instruction. Obey your instruction. They are now, when the Opanike was talking about that they want to go to the election, it's not a joke, oh, they are planning this. And you must all be prepared to have a post-election. You will give it what it takes. And my son, my your son, no, no, don't clap yet, Joe. It's either bread or break. If Obi does not win, forget Nigeria. Make it, uh, uh, when I say it, please. I'm not, you know, I'm not the candidate. I don't relate to Obi. I am saying, saying it from the bottom of my heart. There are certain things that I tell this whole group I'm going to say. One of those who have believed very vividly before, you know him, I won't mention his name now. All that time he was talking, oh, I have an uncompromising believer in United Nigeria. I said, you are deceiving yourself. We never agree. He came to me three days ago in my village. I was just looking at you. I said, you talking like this? He said, if we win this election, we will never be free again. A non-Christian, a non-Northerner, a non-Southerner, a non-Northerner will never be president. That is their plan. Right now, they are all managing to vote for Fatiku, judging their candidate to get a, in order not to be there. How they will do it, we will see. But you must be prepared. I don't want you to be said that they use that mandate and make it clear that will be the president of Nigeria. Anything done to the contrary. They should know that. And I'm, 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 I've been saying this before now. If you don't structure for us to have a, an agreed constitution and you don't revert us to the constitution of independence, forget Nigeria. And I always said before, please, just recollect yourself. I'm not talking about just making a speech for campaign. I have always organized advocated change this constitution before the election there is too much of loopholes in it I, nobody supported me when i was even saying hey we must do this thing now before the election if you don't do the, the constitution we won't go anywhere there is no time i want to beg all of you here i believe you are sincere freedom fighters 
You are not just voting an election. As somebody said, go back. Go and walk like their cars. Go and make sure that anybody who's going to deprive your generation, your children, their freedom and their rights, you will fight your last blood. I ask you, what do you have to gain from this election? Next April, I'll be 95. Has God not done enough for me? What's my business whether Nigeria is right or wrong? I have no children going to school. I have no children looking for job. I have trained them, and they, they should train themselves, for they have grandchildren. And when those of us who believe we fought for independence, as the Parkland government say, it is the it is the Aulo and Azikwe that fought for the independence of this country. And I, I, I can claim I, I was a good follower. These people want to continuously oppress us now, say they don't want independence. It was that agitation we had that the colonial office said, all right, those who want, those who want their independence, those who want self-government, you can have it in 1956. They don't say they are not ready. Because they are, they are not as advanced, they are not as educated as we are. So we just said, the colonial knows that said, well, until you have all your own self government, you give your independence. You all remember, it, it, it's, uh, not that now I'm the independence, self government 1959, and we have our independence 1960. We are going on an aggressive. The autonomy is there. How long do the free education there? Or paradis the agricultural development? Uh, yes, I'm going to do develop all this education following what we did in the West Side region. How oh, long be the private officer? He be the Amadou Bello. That was all. Until those who are not satisfied with the position of fairness and equity changed the constitution in 1966 by changing the coup. It is that for a false constitution that we are battling with now. And that's what you want to get rid of, they will get it off easily. Mind you, freedom is never granted. It's fought for. And you should be prepared to fight for it. By all means. My Ibo brothers, I am not satisfied with your support to I'm telling you openly. Why are your people have not put your money as God has given you into this fight? Those of us who are supporting you are poor, we are short, Same. poor church rats. We are not. South side, middle best, southwest, those who are supporting you for Brother Ria, we are supporting you very well. But we are the weak, we, we, have, we didn't steal any money to, to spend. Tell your people to come out and give me. You should not suffer because of what is about this election. We are not going to bribe anybody. We, are, we, are, we don't want your money to bribe. We want your money to, to you to mobilize. And what I have seen in Ibo that I have never seen it before. I have seen unity of first, first class. I have always known of Ibo Ibo Kwenu Ibo Kwenu. I don't know why. I say we have never been anybody to be the chairman. Excellency, 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 Excellency. But you are here on a very serious note. I am very happy this meeting was summoned. And you are 10 in this great number. I didn't know it was going to be as large. I thought it was like the meeting we are having before. Because I come with a lot of passion. You see, talking about to be talking about this is today, where well, it's all right with all of you. You can't share the passion of Clark and myself. Because many of you don't know what was before independence and before the coup of 1966. Many of you grew up after the military coup of 1966, when they turned Nigeria upside down. 
when we are having all the problems we have set you before independence to live in peace together if we really want to own Nigeria sincerely. With all the problems we have, the question of revenue allocation, the question of state police, the question, we have said all that before the British came. All that is issue. What is your duty now? I listen to what you have said, and as uh, Senator Arakele said, the battle is on. I don't like what to come and do all these nice speeches. You are in a war, and our opponents are not sleeping at all. They have underrated us when we begin. They are now seeing how we this we go and they are devising all sorts of machinations. I would like to have a meeting with at least two delegates from each place. Because what I want to say now is this crowd is too much for me. It's, we have a plan for action now. And the deputy leader of Visit Panda, the, the ladies folk there, don't take it lightly. This is where I stand. It's not a question. You are fighting for your freedom. It's not an ordinary by election you're having. The minority Londoners who are holding on this president, they don't want to leave office. Don't, 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 don't play with your freedom. Don't be deceived. You are not doing an election. You are fighting a war to get out of slavery, out of bondage. All this gospel revelation that they are doing for you just is a, is a camouflage. Many of us are living in denial. Even among the Igbos, they are fighting shy of saying it is our turn because they will say it is an Igbo affair. But the reason is not that they are different affair. When the Igbo say they want to go, you are teaching them, you say they can't go, you go to war. And the very reason why they feel they are being cheated, you are doing it openly. I don't you see. If many of you think of the battle in a, in a philosophical and ideological principle, it is not a question of justice and election. Obi phenomenon is not uh, labor, it's not to be. And as I often said, I'm seeing repeating, those of us who are voting for labor now will be leadership. Labor Party now is like Nadeko. All those who are there, I am not labor. You know my background. But Obi is leaving the, 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 the crusade to get the world from the bondage of serious oppressors who are blind oppressors. Don't, don't make a mistake about it. They don't want to go. They don't want to live there. I'm saying it openly. And as that lady said, take it from me. A fellow Yoruba man was speaking to me yesterday at a place. I went to visit somebody, prominent Yoruba man. And that year I was asking Baba Yola, he said, ah, you don't know Baba, I won't be here. And I said, you, what are you? He said, I don't want to be I said, you are gone. Ah, what is Baba? I'll be on the structure. To be on the They are now, when the Opanike was talking about that they want to scotch you the election, it's not a joke, oh, they are planned this. And you must all be prepared to have a post election. You will give it what it takes. And my son, my your son, no, no, don't clap yet, Joe. Is either bed or break. If Obi does not win, forget Nigeria. Make it, um, uh, when I say it, please, I'm not, you know, I'm not the candidate. I don't relate to Obi. I am saying it from the bottom of my heart. 
There are certain things that I tell this one group I'm going to say. One of those who have believed very vividly before, you know him, I won't mention his name now. All that I was talking about, oh, I have an uncompromising believer in religion Nigeria. I said, you are deceiving yourself. We never agree. He came to me three days ago in my village. I was just looking at you. I said, you talking like this? He said, if we win this election, we will never be free again. A non-Christian, a non-Northerner, a non-Southerner, a Northerner will never be president. That is their plan. Right now, they are all managing to vote for Fatiku, jettisoning their candidate to get a, a Northerner to be there. How they will do it, we will see. But you must be prepared. I don't want you to be said that they use that mandate and make it clear that will be the president of Nigeria. Anything done to the contrary, they should know that. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, I've been saying this before now. If you don't structure for us to have a, an agreed constitution and you don't revert us to the constitution of independence, forget Nigeria. And I often said before, please, just recollect yourself. I'm not talking about just making a speech for campaign. I have always advocated change this constitution before the election. There is too much of loopholes in it. Nobody supported me. When I was even saying, hey, we must do this thing now before the election. If we don't do the constitution, we won't go anywhere. There is no time. I want to beg all of you here. I believe you are all sincere freedom fighters. You are not just for the election. As somebody said, go back. Go and walk like your cars. Go and make sure that anybody is going to deprive your generation, your children, their freedom and their rights, you will fight your last blood. I ask you, what do you have to gain from this election? Next April, I'll be 95. Has God not done enough for me? What's my business whether Nigeria is right or wrong? I have no children going to school. I have no children looking for a job. I have trained them, and they, have, they should train themselves, but they have grandchildren. And when those of us who believe we fought for independence, as the uh, Parkland government say, it is the Ibo, it is the Aulo and Azikwe that fought for the independence of this country. And I, 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 I can claim I, I was a good follower. These people want to continuously oppress us now, say they don't want independence. It was that agitation we had that the colonial office said, all right, those who want, those who want the independence, those who want self-government, you can have it in 1956. They don't say they are not ready. Because they are, they are not as advanced, they are not as educated as we are. So they said, the colonial office then said, well, or do you have all your own self-government, you give you your independence. You all remember, it, it, it's, uh, not that now I'm the independence, self-government 1959, and we have our independence 1960. We are going on an aggressive. The autonomy is there. I will not do the free education there, or what I did in the agricultural development. Uh, yes, I'm not to do develop all this education following what we did in the Western region. Our Lord be the Fibibati of Fife. He be the Amadou Belu. That was all. Until those who are not satisfied with the position of fairness and equity changed the constitution in 1966 by changing the coup. It is that for a false constitution that we are battling with now. And that's what you want to get rid of. They won't get it off easily. Mind you, freedom is never granted. It's fought for. And you should be prepared to fight for it. 
bad means. My evil brothers, I am not satisfied with your support. Oh, I'm telling you freely. Why are your people have not put your money as God has given you into this fight? Those of us who are supporting you are poor. We are church, poor church rats. We are not. South uh, Middle West, South West, those who are supporting you for Blue area, we are supporting you very well. But we are the weak. We, we, have, we didn't steal any money to, to spend. Tell your people to come out and give me. You should not suffer because of what is about this election. We are not going to bribe anybody. We, are, we, are, we don't want your money to bribe. We want your money to, to you to mobilize. And what I'm seeing in Ibo that I've never seen it before. I have seen unity of first, first class. I have always known of Ibo. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have been educated with this video. I hope you have learned something from the video you just watched. Please go to the comment section and put down your comments. Whatever you think about the video you have watched or anything you have learned that you wanted to share together, go to the comment section and keep yourself busy. It's a free place where people share their opinion. And please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time a video comes out. And also, share the video to your family and friends. Share it to all platforms so that people can get aware of what is happening in the world, mainly in the contraption called Nigeria. We have to keep people on their toe, keep people informed on what is going on. That is exactly what we are doing. Every video you are watching in this channel is for the purpose of education and nothing more. Thank you so much for watching and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again.